Hey guys, Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft, and today what I want to do is I want to continue on with uh, tracks, and we're going to talk about the cat family of tracks today. Before I do though, uh, I had a lot of questions about the formula that Dr. Halfpenny put up in reference to the size of tracks, claws, things of that nature, toe showing. Very simply, the letter that is capitalized is the foot that is the larger of the two, whether it be front or rear. So if the F is capitalized, obviously the front feet are larger, such as in the dog family and the cat family. Uh, if the hind foot is capitalized or the H is capitalized, the hind feet are the larger ones. And that would be with the bear, the weasel family, the <coughs> rodent family, and the rabbit order as well. The numbers indicate the number of toes that show could be four, could be five, really dependent upon the animal itself. That doesn't mean that they don't have another appendage there, such as in the dog family and the cat family. You know, the dog has that dew claw. It's still a claw, but it's not seen. Uh, same thing with the cat family. You know, they have that killing claw, which is also a claw in the front, but you just don't see it. Um, so you have to look at that, like when we start talking about the rodent order. They may have five toes in the front, you just don't see it because they don't show. Something else to keep take into consideration. And then lastly, the C denotes whether or not the claws are going to show. You're going to see a, a C, you're going to see CO, which is claws often, or you may see the absence of a C, and that means that they don't usually show. So that's just to break that down, and I figure that now if you've written that down and you understand that, it'll help you a little bit easier. So now let's just jump into the cat family. So in the cat family, what we have here, we know here's our code that we were just basically going over. And we see that it's an F4 and an H4. So the front feet, uh, the F is capitalized so we know that the front feet are larger than the hind feet and both feet show usually four toes. In the cat family we're going to basically refer to the domestic and the feral cat, the bobcat, the lynx, and a mountain lion. A mountain lion goes by many different names and the names are the puma, the catamount, the panther, the painter, and the cougar. It's all the same animal. There's no differentiating the uh, the mountain lion from those other names. When we take a look at this track, we know that it's an asymmetrical track. All these toes are not the same size. But the track appears to be more round than anything. We know that the claws don't show. The digital pads are usually somewhat of a teardrop shape. The inside toe, again facing the inside of the body of the animal, will be larger than the outside toe. Also this leading toe here, much reminiscent of the dog, will be leading and will be higher than the subsequent other toes. So this would denote that this is a right track. On the top of the interdigital pad you'll notice that there are actually two lobes that you're going to wind up seeing. They're, they may not be as pronounced as this. And then on the bottom, you'll see three lobes. So, going through that again, they're wider than long. The claws don't generally show. There's two lobes on the pad. The toes are teardropped. And their favorite gait, actually, is a walk. Most of the time, you're going to see a cat stalking. That would be their favorite thing to do. Uh, and note, of their habitat as well. They do like to be elevated so that they can look down on things and take a lay of the land. We'll leave the domestic cat for later. Let's talk about what we're going to find out in the wild. So let's talk about the smallest member being the bobcat now. Really quick, Let's go over the bobcat here. Now, a bobcat, if you're looking for them, you're more or less you're going to find them. They prefer cover. That doesn't mean that they're not going to come out into, you know, 
an open field or a non-cover situation, but most of the time you're going to find their tracks in cover. They also are most of the time they are nocturnal, which means they'll come out at nighttime more than they will in the daytime. They prefer the nighttime as opposed to daytime, but it doesn't mean again that you're not going to find them in the daytime walking around. Their tracks are roughly two inches by two inches, again giving that round appearance when we look at them. Their stride, depending on how big the animal is, their walking stride is roughly 22 inches in length and then the straddle of that animal would be at about five inches. Okay right here if you look you're gonna see here is my inside toe followed by the leading toe here this being the outside toe and again being smaller than the inside <clears throat> if you look here you can actually see the remnants of the double lobe and on here you can see one two three now if we take a look let me back up a little bit here and we'll take a look at our there's your two inches a little bit more than two inches about two and a quarter but again still as you can see now I want to show you this something. is the cast impression that we have right here this is the rear of a bobcat and this is the front of the same animal okay notice that there is a difference in size I wanted to show you the difference in size for very simply I saw a comment that was on a page on Facebook it was a discussion page but I've seen it before as well people take sizes from books even half pennies books and they think that the number or the size the inch amount length and width are the gospel and you can't all right these are averages okay that have been built up over time many examples many different animals and many different tracks have been looked at something that you have to remember again size is relative I'm going to show you something on here that you're not going to think is possible but it is all right all animals start off small some animals never get big but all animals continue to grow and get bigger so the fact that you're looking at one bobcat track that I cast that was your typical two by two or two and by two and a quarter the other pad that you saw on the actual foot that I had were a little smaller well, it's because the animal was a younger animal and that's something that you have to take into consideration it was a younger animal and that one I know for a fact to also have been a female so the females are smaller than the males as well So talking about the lynx, or the Canadian lynx, we know that it is a solitary creature. It likes to be nocturnal most of the time, and it's very elusive. It tends to shy away from people. However, they do come out in the daytime during the winter a lot because of the temperatures alone to forage for their own um, well means. The track itself is somewhere around three and three quarters of an inch in length and in width three and three quarters of an inch plus or minus a little here and there again averages through evolutionary time the lynx wound up giving getting a very thick um, concentration of hair in the feet to actually help him float above the deep snows uh, almost like a webbing or almost like a snowshoe that's built into his feet you know to keep the animal suspended in the snow you may not even see so much 
the toe pads as you will an impression in the snow and you may only see what I have outlined as an impression so you may have to start working with stride and straddle to come up to your conclusion on whether or not you're tracking a lynx, a bobcat, or another animal. <clears throat> Again, same thing if you actually, you know, look at their pads, all the principles apply. Two lobes on top, three lobes on the bottom, teardrop, toes, inside toe being larger than the outside toe, and of course you have a leading toe as well for that foot. Their stride is about 28 inches and their straddle winds up being 7 inches while they are in their, their walking stride. So that would be the Lynx family. Unfortunately, I do not have a Lynx track to show you. So we'll move on to the mountain lion. Alright, so we're going to go into the last member of the cat family, which would be the mountain lion. And I think the mountain lion is probably the most elusive of all the cats that are out there. People have a tendency to say, that, oh my god, I've seen a lion, or I saw lion tracks, and things of that nature. And I think it's probably one of the most mis, um, misidentified tracks that are probably out there um, that we have today. When I show you the track that I actually have cast, there is no doubt in my mind that if you ever come across a, a mountain lion track, you will know exactly what that is. I think probably 75% of the tracks that people are identifying as mountain lion tracks wind up being melted out um, dog tracks or melted out wolf tracks depending upon where they are in the country. So let's take a look at the mountain lion right now. So the mountain lion, we know it's elusive, we know it's solitary. Uh, his habitat is usually formed around his food source, uh, primarily deer and smaller animals. They do prefer elevated areas, uh, mountainous terrains and things so that they can see. Um, what they're actually looking for and what they're hunting for. Their track is a definite robust track. It's a heavier animal than the other two that we previously talked about. But if you look at their track size, which is about three and a half by three and a half, you'll notice that it is smaller than a bobcat. Or, I'm sorry, it's smaller than a lynx. Uh, that is just over the evolutionary process, which is kind of what I wanted to show you, and I'll show you in a little bit better for relative sizing. Their stride, and a walking stride, is about 40 inches, and their straddle is roughly 8 inches. This is our mountain lion, this is our wolf. Okay, You can definitely see a difference between them. And you can also see that if this track was laid down and it started to get melted out, depending on the time frame, how it could possibly be misinterpreted as this track. All right, just take a look at them and study them and look at the differences. All right, here's your two lobes up on top, your three lobes on the bottom. You can see it's a very beefy, robust track. All right, here's our large inside toe, followed by our leading toe here. This is our outside toe, and so on and so forth. The last thing that I'm going to show you is a good way to gauge your um, your cat tracks if you think that you're actually looking at a cat. And I'm going to show you the relative sizes between each other and a good way to actually remember that. Okay, the very last thing that I want to show you is relative sizes. All right, these are just, it's just, again, it's a tip that's going to help you remember sizes of the tracks that you're looking at to help you formulate educated guesses as to what you may be or may not be following. Take a look at domestic cat tracks. They are smaller, obviously, than a bobcat. I like to think of a cat track as being a very large marble. You know, the big Aggies are, you know, they're about that big around. So I refer to a cat track as a big marble. We start to move up in size, we get to the bobcat. Think of a bobcat as being about the size of a golf ball. All right, the lynx track, although I don't have one, they are reminded of a softball. All right, they're the largest print because of the amount of hair 
and the development that the cat's feet had to go into because of the t most of the time it's in a snowy environment and it has to stay up above the snow. And finally, the mountain lion track which we have is roughly going to be the size of a baseball. And that would be your relative sizes when we start talking about the cat family. Okay, starting from left to right, this is a domestic house cat. That's actually my cat that's right there. This is our bobcat. And then finally, our mountain lion, as I don't have the lynx. So that's pretty much it for the cat family of tracks. I, I apologize for not having a lynx track. You know, unfortunately, there are just tracks that I just don't have. Uh, we start talking about the Mustelid family or the Weasel family, and you're going to understand why. The Mink track is probably no bigger than the tip of my pinky, yet it still contains the same characteristics as an Otter or a Wolverine. So, uh, we're going to continue on. We're going to keep moving on. And, you know, don't forget, always question, comment, you know, think about different things. Take notes. I like to tell people if you're going to watch this series, you know, sometimes it does get bored, but if you sit down every now and then with a, with a notepad and start jotting down the things that are important and pertinent to your cause, it'll help you greatly while you're out there in the field. So this is Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft. Thank you for your views and your comments. Until the next one, walk the woods.